moving into Wilbur III was uh, an important understanding that had gotten all the early developmentalists into quite a bit of trouble. And that is, namely, you have a developmental model that you postulate, and it can be stages of value systems, like in Claire Graves, or stages of cognition, like in Piaget, or stages of moral development, like Kohlberg, or stages of ego development, like in Jane Lovinger. And what each of them were doing were researching their populations of human beings and asking them questions. And the questions that they asked sort of set up the type of model that they would get answers for. And so Kohlberg is asking questions that in hindsight are moral questions. A man is married to a woman. She has a lethal illness. Um, he's, does he have the right to go down to the local pharmacy and steal the medicine in order to save her life? Um, Claire Graves asks one question and only one question. Describe the behavior of a healthy adult psychological organism. And um, so what you find is that the questions they asked ended up determining the type of model that they built. And then each one of them in these early days, and these are in the like mostly 1950s, uh, would then create a model of the psyche with this one particular natural intelligence either ego intelligence or moral intelligence or cognitive intelligence as the central and main pillar of the psyche. And all the other intelligences just sort of hung off of it and you know, weren't really that central. They were all uh, just derivatives of this one really important developmental line that their model covered. And we would lately call that line absolutism. It takes one particular developmental line and absolutizes it. Uh, we would find this would happen with all of the major dimensions of the aqua framework, uh, quadrants, levels, lines, states, and types there was some model that took just one of those, the upper left quadrant, which is the interior of the eye, uh, and make that absolute. They would take the right-hand quadrant, the objective, scientific, behavioristic view of the organism, and make that absolutistic. Um, it, it became such a, a common occurrence it was almost kind of kind of humorous to see this just happening over and over and over again. Um, but that was part of what you might call an occupational hazard of being a pioneer developmentalist. You just, you went in, you found a model. This is the model that you have, so this is what you work with. And so this is what you make central. Whereas, as a matter of fact, what it looks like and what Wilbur III sort of officially proposed was that you have levels and lines or waves and streams. You have these levels of consciousness that are essentially similar and then you have all these developmental lines growing through them at their own relatively independent rate. So you could have somebody highly developed in the cognitive line, um, averagely developed in the moral line, and really poorly developed in a uh, emotional line. And so that was sort of 
the Wilbur Three, um, it still is an extremely important part of the integral framework as we conceive it, because it's still one of the most common mistakes that are made. You still see individual models taking just one developmental line and making it the ultimate, ultimate reality. Um, it's what sunk Piaget and, and ended up sinking Kohlberg, ended up sinking Graves, in a certain sense. Um, so what we do is say, look, there's anywhere from a dozen, maybe even two dozen developmental lines. And they're all moving through about a dozen developmental levels. And these levels are the same for all of them. So they're all moving through the same degrees of altitude. It's like going up a mountain. They're all going up the same altitude. But they're looking at it from different perspectives. Once they're, once, if you're at cognitive development and at 5,000 feet, and you're at moral development and you're at 5,000 feet, two things can be said. One, you're at the same altitude. You're both at 5,000 feet. But two, you see very different things. The world still looks different. It's, it's a different perspective. And so you're seeing something different. And that was a big understanding, too, because that let us see how some very otherwise confusing things were happening, such as spiritual teachers being highly developed in their spiritual awareness and yet poorly developed in a lot of other capacities. And we sort of had the notion that somehow spiritual awakening made you perfect across the board and that it would do everything for you. Not the case. And so we had just numerous cases of people that could be very highly developed cognitively, morally, very poorly developed spiritually. Others highly developed spiritually and actually poorly developed morally. And this, this was conf confusing to a lot of people that they would see, you know, particularly these Eastern uh, masters um, getting caught up in sex scandals and money and uh, just all sorts of stuff that um, for about a decade or two was one of the most traumatizing events going on in the spiritual community. And people just couldn't understand why their spiritual teachers were human. <laughs> and so having this understanding um, gave us a way to see the different developmental capacities in these multiple intelligences and see that they were different. And that mastering one did not necessarily mean mastering the others. And so that was, um, that understanding was generally referred to as Wilbur Three, that's sort of the third major phase that I moved into in terms of theoretical understanding.